Yes. Okay. And one more thing. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Okay, we're back on three. Yes. One, two, three. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Once again, man and cast time. I'm here with my boy Vivek. Say hello, Vivek. Hey, how are you doing? They are doing great, I suppose. Or maybe not. It's quarantine, so, so we don't know. Um, first things first, before we get into the Menem cast, um, I'm polishing up my website yet again, papaflemmy.engineer, so um, if you are interested, yeah, papaflemmy.engineer, you can go there, you can find a lot of stuff, so that there was sarcasm, I haven't done a lot of stuff yet, but but you can take a look at it and then you will see what this is all about. Okay, Menem cast today, we are going to talk about the main structure of the Python scripts you need to use. And all of that stuff. A few classes, a few objects. Yada 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 da se. Vivek, do you want to start? <laughs> so one thing that you should learn before doing Manum is definitely Python or some programming language because a lot of it has to deal with object-oriented stuff. So you could probably learn Java or something. But you want to learn about object-oriented programming before you get started with Manum because you need to understand how you create objects, how the scenes work and things like that. It helps a lot. So make sure you learn programming before getting started with Manum. Don't just like jump to Manum and expect to learn programming along with it. Yes, de definitely. So so I can say from my own experience, so I can speak from my own experience. Um, I only had like one or two semesters of Python programming at, at university and that's totally enough to create some animations. You have seen some animations on my channel. If you are willing to learn a bit of stuff, then yeah, then you should be good after like one or two months of practicing with Python and then you should be able to create your own 3D animations, for example. So yeah, that should be enough. Okay, so after you learn uh, object-oriented stuff, we're gonna talk about the overall structure of Manum, the overall object-oriented structure of Manum. So this is a PDF I got from online. It's not my work. I will link the source in the description so you can go check them out. But here we have Manum itself. And these are the classes, the main interfaces, if you remember from, say, Java or something. So here, this is an important one, the scene class. So looking at the scene class, we have all of these scenes. Graph scene, moving camera scene, sample space scene, blah, 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 3D scene. And when you create your own scene, which is some animation you make, you're also inheriting from this class scene. But these are some given scenes. You can call them templates. These are some templates you can use. So for example, if I want to create a graph scene where I'm having a graph and the graph is like moving or something, we can use graph scene because it already has some built-in functions that helps us with the axes and the functions. And here we have the object and the V object. So here we have arrows, lines, arcs, cubes, etc., etc., etc. So when we talk about objects in the future, like not in the future, later on in this video, you can go back to this PDF, which is in the description, and you can look at all of these objects and try them out for yourself. Another thing I'd like to mention is this side. So coordinate system, we have axes and other stuff and animation. So here we have all of the fades, the spins, the grows, the transforms and the rights. And then the cameras, we'll talk about the cameras in a different episode. So yeah, now let's get to coding. Yes, exactly. And for this, I have prepared a little something. You can find the source code down below. You can just um, go ahead and work with us here. So for the basic structure, we have already talked about this a little bit before in the last Menem cast. So what you always want to do is import the Menem library to your Python file. This is just something that you need to do. If you don't do that, then Menem or Python doesn't know that it wants to use Menems, so you can make use of all the commands that are implemented in the library. So you have to always import this, just like you would import the math library to use math e equations, for example, square roots in Python. Other than that, you always would like to create classes. Classes is the stuff that Vivek just talked about. And those classes are here with a scene, for example. So we called this thing test scene last time. I'm making use of what we have done before. So this was the test scene we have let run before. And yeah, you are just going to create a class. And then you are going to implement, uh, uh, implement certain functions into here. 
this is a function which just uses a command called self. So you put in some commands in this function and it's going to run this function. And this is going to be your animation after all. And then there are other things that we are going to talk about over the course of this video. So one of the most important objects that you are probably going to use, you want to do math animations, is the text M object class. Um, I can just suppose that the M before the object stands for menum. I don't know, maybe math, I don't care. But yeah, you always have to write <laughs> out, for example, text M object. We don't know what it means, but it does what it has to do. For example, you're going to create yourself a text M object and then you're going to put Gänsefüßchen in there, as you would say in German, okay? And two, two double primes, okay? No, only double primes there. And then, for example, I literally hate you. It's just going to be a text. What you can also do, you can implement latex in there, meaning math e equations. We are going to talk about this later in the game, how to implement math equations into here. It's, it's really easy, just do your regular menum stuff and you always need like a double backslash instead of a single backslash that you would need in regular um, latex. Other than that, this is a textm object. It's important, we can let it run. I'm going to do this real quick. Just as a little reminder, at first we want to specify the location where our Python file is located. So this means CD desktop. We are going to let it run. It changed to the desktop. And now we are going to open up this file. This file is called Brav, all right, so we are going to use menum and then brav.py. Other than that, our scene was called test scene. So do not forget this. This was our test scene that we are going to let run. More about classes later. So this is test scene. And then whatever you wish. If you just want to use the last frame, the last animated frame, just use a negative um, S. I, I think P, PL for the low resolution and P for the high resolution. I'm going to let it run. And you see it's going to run our scene. I literally hate you. And you can also see that this thing writes everything out. We have used the self.play write and our object was text here. Okay, so this was the first part. This was text and object. I have said that we want to let class test scene run here. One other thing to note is that you can, just like with a regular video, make little cutscenes in there basically. So, so what you can do, you can structure your Python file into different scenes that you can render one after another. So we have three different scenes here, test scene, test scene 2 and test scene 3. So let me run test scene 3 real quick, such that you can see that we can run them, uh, let them run ind individually. So test scene 3. Let it run. It's going to take a while. We are going to use a different object here. Vivek is going to explain what it does in a second. And there we go. It's going to write something out. Okay. This is weird. Looks white and all. It's really weird. Um, more about that later when we talk about um, SVG files. One thing I'd like to talk about is the whole import thing. So when we do from manimlib.imports import import star. So if you look on my screen, I have manim, manimlib, and imports.py. And this imports.py basically contains a lot of imports. So here we have from the cameras, from the object. So if you import this, it just imports all of these. So it's just a quicker way of doing all of these. Yes. Okay. And one more thing. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let's, okay. <laughs> okay, now let's, let, going back to what you said about writing equations. So I'm going to do the same thing what you have. The scene in the bracket means that we are inheriting the scene class. So if you go back to here, you notice how there's a scene over here and you're just creating your own test scene right next to all of these. So that's what it is. And we can make equations using the text object, not sorry, not text object, tech object. So it's just T E X object. So Remember how you said you have to put two slashes? You can actually do R and then put the thing in quotes and then put slashes. But the R means it's raw string. So basically backslashes in Python are it, like the known characters. So for example, if I do backslash N, that means a new line. But if I do R in front of the string, it ignores all of that stuff. So that's what, so we can do like say 
integral from a to b of f of x dx. And then if I scale it up a bit, and then I can write it, and I to run it, I'll just do this. <laughs> so we just need it. <laughs> That's embarrassing. If you define yourself a function, you need to define yourself a function. Otherwise, you can't put anything into the function. <laughs> yep. It's not a problem. That was scoffed. Happens to the best. Anyways, so this is the... There we go. So you can use... To write equations, I use tech object and not text object. But sometimes you want to use text object. For example, if I want to have some text before it, so I'm going to say... If I put a text over here, you can see the integral is, and then you have this, and instead of dollar dollar, you can use that. So if you're on Mac, you want to close the uh, you want to close the file every time it runs because when you run it again, it's not gonna play the new file, but it's oh. rather gonna play the old file. That is so weird. There we go. So here's a the integral is this. Yeah. Um, I have said before that we can use other objects too. So we have covered text m object now and hash m object. And also there's SVG m object. You are going to use this um, command if you want to display SVG files in some way. For example, what I have used before. So let me open it up real quick. Yeah, it's a thinking e emoji, all right? This is what I want to display originally. Here you're going to use SVG object for uh, SVG M object for this. And what you do is you put into uh, what was it called Vivek slashes? Slashes. Yeah. You uh, put this in, in into slashes and then you're going to put a dot, which just means you're going to use the path specified. For me it's CD desktop that I used before. And then slash font.svg. So font.svg is what I was using. So we are just going to write it out. I have shown it before. Um, I'm using the write command yet again. So yeah, this is how you use svg objects. You have to play around with it a bit more because you need to specify um, the colors for each and every frame. Um, that you want to use on each and every part of the SVG file. It's kind of complicated doing this. We are going to get to this topic in a later video. Just bear with us. So another way you can do image object is image M object. So if you have a PNG file and you want to put it in there, so I can say image is equal to image M object, and then you can put the path. So I don't know what images I have over here. So let me check. I have a few images over here, so if I use twitter.png, so I'll just say slash img slash twitter.png. You can add images using either SVG or PNG. But the benefit for SVG is because when it animates, you, you can have the whole Manum-ish animation, which is the reason why people use SVG. For example, yes. if you look at Papa Flammy's intro, if he just used a PNG, he wouldn't have the animated logo part. Yeah, it's pretty brilliant how this library is able to like trace the path of this vector graphic out. It's it's pr it's, it's pretty amazing in, in my opinion. I have no idea how this shit works, but it's crazy what um Grant got together there. <laughs> I agree. One tip I have for you is when you're exploring new objects is, for example, let's say I make a line over here. So I'm going to say L is equal to line from the origin to to and to right. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a line from the origin to X is equal to 2. But what if I don't know what the line does? So I can type out line in VS Code, for example, and then I can right click on this and say go to definition. So when I click that, it's going to show me all of this and if you look at this config over here these are parameters you can pass and here it says start end so these are parameters you can pass to the line object so for example if i'm creating a circle and i don't know what parameters i have to pass i can go to the definition of a circle so if i just click circle and then right click go to definition here it says arc so 
we need to go back to arc. So arc is over here. And here, one of the parameters is radius. So that's how you set the radius. It's kind of obvious that you would use the radius parameter to set the radius, but sometimes there are parameters that you don't know. For example, if you're creating an axis and you want to know how to remove the arrows at the end from the axis, you could right click on the axis. So if I right click over here and say, go to definition, I can see that it's referring to axis config and there's an include tip. So I can use that over here to remove the tip. So going like, that's why editors sometimes help. So you can go to definition using that. And also here in VS code, if I highlight over it, it shows me all of this. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about animation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, um, animation, so this is like the last part here for now. We're not going to go too in-depth, but animations are really important if you want to do animations, alright. And the most basic one we have used up until now is the right animation. And it's just animating like an SVGM object or a TGM object or a TextM object from left to right, like you would write it out in a normal case. So this is like the right option. There are other things too. For example, you could let stuff fade in. Fade in. Okay, if we were to let text fade in, our text is not going to write out, it's going to fade in. I literally hate you. Exactly. So, you can also do the reverse thing and fade stuff out. So, you can fade stuff in, then you are going to wait for a second, self.wait. You are going to let the function wait for a second, for example, one second. And then, you can just copy that, self.play and then fade out the text. And then we are going to do self.wait yet again, just for a tiny little split second. And there we go, our animation fades in and then out after a little while. So this is just how it works. And there's other stuff. You have probably seen before that grants animations like transform into other texts, for example, so like, um, we, we can have an equation or we have our e emoji down here. So let me put this into here. That's the transform op option. We are just going to write out our um, bra, our emoji. We don't even need it to write out. We can also let it fade in. Or what you can do, you can just show creation. It's like a faster kind of writing out, but it's not really writing out. You are going to see what it is. So we are going to show the creation. And after that, we are going to transform our bra into the text that we have here. And now I'm going to let test scene number two run. Now our creation will be shown. It's this weird emoji and then it's going to transform into I literally less than free you. So this is just how it works. Okay, and there are many other things you can do. So, so one of Vivek's most favorite animations is um, fade in from down. You can also make fade fade in from left, fade in from right, fade in from up. This does also work. And we're going to let it run. So there are many things, and that's going to be a, a link attached yet again with some animations that you can make use of. They should also be in this one. Um, document that Vivek has shown before. So that's all about yeah, animations so I want to say for now. Sorry Vivek. <laughs> the link you were talking about just goes to this PDF that we were showing before. So what you can do is you can go to say this animation interface and then you go over here and you have all of these animations. So spin out from nothing, fade out and shift down, grow from center. There's so many of these. So you can go through them and then try them all yourself and see which ones you like, which ones you don't like. Another animation that uh, we forgot to talk about is uncreate. So if yeah. you want to remove something from the scene, you can do uncreate. And another thing we talk didn't talk about is adding stuff to the scene. So instead of writing, you can also do over here on my screen, instead of doing self.play write of equation, we can do self.add of equation. So instead of writing it's just gonna show up so if i do oh that was my bad so instead of doing the right animation it's just gonna be there and wait a second so this is helpful in case you want to you know just put something in there previously before the scene starts 
So if I want to have an image already there and then I want to write text on top of it, you can use self.add for that. You can also do self.remove. So if I do self.remove of equation and then wait a bit, it's going to be there. And then it's just going to go away. I didn't save, sorry. Yeah, so there, there are so many animations you can do. Um, those are some I really didn't think about right now. Like, um, yeah, like like the add one, it's it's rarely used, I I think, but maybe it's, it, it finds its uses sometimes. Yeah. Yes, other than that, uh, you can let animations go slower. So there are actually two op uh, options you can take. Um, either you can set down the FPS in some way in the uh, in the command box. Or you can just set the runtime. Now, um, uh, Vivek, was was the command for the runtime? Was it run underscore time? Yeah, it's run underscore time. Run and underscore also we're going to talk about... Yeah, go on. Free? Okay, um, let me do this real quick. I'm going to do this for the first animation yet again. Um, what this does is just... Is, is, is going to slow down or uh, increase the, the speed of your animation. So let me run this real quick. Yes, you see it was way slower this time. It took us three seconds to fade in from down. All right, so this is just what run underscore time equals to three means. So this is like the, the seconds it's going to take. Vivek? Okay, so another parameter you can pass to the play function is rate underscore func. And rate underscore func just tells the rate function at which Manum should play the animation. So for example, if I do something linear, it's just gonna play it at a constant rate. So let me show you the default one. So if I run this command, it should play it. And you can see how it's nice and linear. But what if I do rush into? So I'll do rate underscore funk is equal to rush into. And what rush into just means is that it's gonna be slow in the beginning and it's gonna go fast in the end. So you play this. Here it's slow and then it's fast. On animations itself, where we'll talk about the animation interface and talk about how you can create your own, blah, blah, blah. But for now, these are some of the basics. Yes, exactly. And this basically uh, covers this Manum cast today. It was kind of improvised, to be honest, so you might have noticed at some points that we really didn't know um, how we should structure this. It's going to get better over time. It's a new format that we are trying out here. We are giving it our best. Okay, so um, be nice to us. Other than that, um, Vivek, is there anything else you want to say? So so advertise your channel or something, so you should subscribe to Vivek. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one last thing is if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I, I'll check them and I'll try to respond to the ones that aren't completely stupid there are no stupid questions so don't there are stupid to... questions okay there are stupid <laughs> questions but you can ask your questions anyways and if i don't reply then it's a stupid question <laughs> we don't put that in <laughs> don't put that in yeah, sometimes we <laughs> also don't see uh, questions just because they land in the spam folder or, or something i try to clean it out all the time and and try to differentiate yeah. between spam and not spam but sometimes it's just not possible so so if we didn't see your question then post it again and maybe we will get back to it we we promise yes. we we promise okay vivek then i thank you for joining go over to his channel link will be down there at the top of the description maybe also his comment is pinned or something and other than that vivek um i bid you goodbye by the way this video has been sponsored by Brilliant yet again. From this video alone, you might have noticed already that working with men requires a thorough and deep understanding of mathematics and also programming from you. And with the latter one, I mean an understanding of Python, of course. To increase your understanding about algorithms, Python, and programming language in general, I encourage you to try out Brilliant today. Brilliant, in a nutshell, is an online learning platform and also an app, so you can use it wherever you are, that teaches you all things STEM. So if you really want to prepare for your STEM career, then Brilliant is the perfect place for you because they provide you with over 60 interactive courses in science, computer sciences, mathematics, etc. And it's a really great platform to get started with all of your studies.
If you wish to get a deep and intuitive understanding about programming with Python, then I encourage you to try out the <laughs> well, programming with Python course today, which comes with a lot of interactive exercises and also a built-in Python interface. And yes, you have heard it right. It's absolutely fascinating to me, but they implemented a Python console basically into this website and you can program on Brian's website in Python and you can check if your solutions fit the provided ones. It's absolutely fascinating to me and I love it. It's also in their algorithm course so you should try it out. So if this feels like a something for you make sure to check out Brian today for completely free. All you have to do is use the link at the top of the description and the first 200 people to actually use the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription. So try out Brian and support the channel this way. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video then please like and subscribe and recommend channel if like. Also subscribe to Vivek. He's a really gifted person. He's a really great mathematician for his age and we should all really build up his confidence by well, pushing him in subscribers. He does really good stuff over there, so check out his channel. I'm speaking in really high tones of Vivek because he's such a great guy. I hope you did enjoy this Madam cast. It's kind of improvised still, but we are going to do better in the near future. Thank you guys for watching and I'm seeing you in the next video. Ciao! Go, Lumi.